Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on writing an Android plugin for Unity. We're going to use Android Studio, Unity, and Visual Studio Community. We'll also make use of the Android emulator that's part of Android Studio. Make sure everything is up to date before starting to follow along. First, let's create a new project in Unity. We're going to create a few folders to keep our project organized. Let's start by creating a scripts folder, a scenes folder, and a plugins folder. This folder is considered a special location in Unity, and it's where we'll place any plugins or external libraries to be used by the Unity project. Inside the plugins folder, we'll create an Android folder to hold our Android plugins and any other Android libraries that we want in the project. We'll create a 3D cube in the scene, and in the scripts folder, we'll create two scripts, plugin test and rotate cube. Drag the rotate cube script onto the cube object and drag the plugin test onto the main camera. Open the rotate cube script and add the following code. Public float speed equals 30, semicolon, and then an update, transform.rotate, open parenthesis, speed times time dot delta time, comma, two times speed times time dot delta time, comma, minus speed times time dot delta time, close parenthesis, semicolon. Save this file and return to Unity. If we click play, we'll see the cube rotate in the game view. Save the current scene as plugin test in the scenes folder. Let's switch the build platform to Android. From the file menu, select Build Settings, click Android, click the Player Settings on the Build Settings dialog, and update the package name to your own package. I'm going to use CWG Tech, the plugin test. This can be anything as long as it's all lowercase. Go ahead and close the Build Settings. We'll need to create a new Android project. For this, for this example, we'll store the project inside the Unity Project folder, but outside the Assets folder. I use the folder called Plugin Project. This means the Android project will be stored with the Unity project in your Git repository. If you're writing a plugin that's going to be used in multiple Unity projects, then it's best to store the Android project in its own location and copy it forward each time you need it. The company domain should match the domain you used when you updated the Unity player settings, and in my case that is cwgtech.com. Click Next, make sure your phone and tablet are selected, along with an API minimum of 14, and then select Next. For this project, we're not going to have an activity, so select Add No Activity and Finish. Click the Project menu, open the Project View, then click File New from the menu and select New Module. Select Android Library, click Next. Name the library Unity and leave the minimum API at 14. Click Finish to create the new module. In the Project View, expand the Unity tab, then the Java tab. Select the path for your Unity project plugin, right click New Java Class, set the name to my plugin and the kind to Singleton. This will create the class with code to automatically create itself and add an instance accessor. Here you can see the code that's been created for our plugin class. First thing we want to do is to add a log tag string that will be used to identify all of our output in Logcat, making it easier to find our messages. In the class, type private static final string log tag equals CWG tech. You can use your own string, but for now, let's use CWG tech. In the class constructor, add the following log.i, parentheses, log tag, created my plugin, close parentheses, semicolon. Now when the plugin is created, we can see a message in the logcat letting us know it happened. We're also going to store the current system time during this constructor, so we can determine how much time has elapsed since a plugin was created with another function. Declare an instance variable to store this value as private long start time and add the line start time equals system current time millis to the constructor. Add a public method to our class that will return the difference between the current time and the start time as a double in seconds. That's the basic plugin completed. However, before we use it, we need to compile it and then copy it to the plugin Android folder inside Unity. We're going to do this by modifying the Gradle file for our plugin. First, click the build variants tab and set the build mode for our plugin to release. There's no point in using the debug build as debugging a Unity APK is best done with log output. Open the Gradle script for our plugin. We are going to add a task that will copy the output file directly to our Unity folder. Add the following. The depends on assemble will force the AAR file to be built if it's out of date before it's copied. The into command will place it directly into the plugin's Android folder of our Unity project. If you're using a different file structure, then you'll need to either use an absolute path here or adjust the relative changes. Save the file and click Sync to have Gradle rebuild the project. Now we can add the copy plugin task to our toolbar and have it be the default task. Click App and then Edit Configurations. Click Plus. Click Gradle. Click the ellipses to the right of the Gradle project and select Unity. 
type copy plugin into the tasks field and change the name from unnamed to copy plugin. Click OK. Notice the toolbar now has our copy plugin tasks selected and if we click the green play button then our task will execute. After several seconds our task will complete and we should have a copy of our plugin AAR in the Unity folder. Now in the future when we make changes to our Java code we can simply click the green play button and have the library in the Unity project updated. Before we leave Android Studio we need to launch the emulator. Click AVD Manager and run our pre-existing emulator or create a new virtual device if you haven't already done so. You can switch back to Unity and verify that the file Unity Release AAR is in the plugins Android folder. Open the script plugin test for editing and then add the following lines. This is the fully qualified name of the plugin and yours might be different if you used your own company domain. If so, then adjust this line as needed. We're going to use this string to let Unity find our plugin and initialize it. Next we'll create two static public getters for the plugin. One to access the class object and another to access the instance of the object. These will be private variables that will store the actual references that our getters will use. The first getter will set up and return the class access. If the private variable hasn't been set, then create it and store it off for later use. If it has, then just return it. Do the same for the instance object. This time we will call into a static function in our class and return the instance pointer. Or return the previously stored pointer if we've already got it. Add a C function that will call into our Java function get elapsed time. In our start function, add the following. Add a variable to track the elapsed time and then update it in our update function. Every five seconds, I put the result of the get elapsed time function. That's all the code complete for both the Java plugin and the C sharp code that we'll call it. Switch back to Unity. Tap Command B to build the project for our Android platform. The first time you build, you'll need to give your output file a name. I use plugin test. When the build completes, the code will automatically run on an attached Android device, or in our case, the Android emulator. We can switch to Android Studio and the Logcat view to see the output from the code. In the filter window, use Unity Bar CWG Tech to filter the output just to the debug messages we care about. Note that if you use the different string for your Logcat variable, then you'll replace CWG Tech with that string. And there it is. We can see the cube rotating and the elapsed time ticks in our Logcat window. We can also see the startup messages from the plugin constructor. While this is a trivial example, it shows you how to create an Android plugin and call its functions from C Sharp. Next time, we'll look into adding a native modal alert dialog that will pop up over your Unity view and call back into a C Sharp function when the user taps a button. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something. As always, please leave any comments or questions below or follow me on Twitter at CWGTech. Thanks for watching. See you next time.